In the previous episode, we have discussed Thompson's and Rutherford models of the atom. Bohr's model for the hydrogen atom was based on his observation of the discrete emission spectrum of the hydrogen atom, Rutherford's planetary model of the atom, and on Planck's quantum hypothesis. Now, we are going to give a simplified summary for some basic principles of the Bohr model. First, the electron moves in circular orbits around the nucleus. This animation shows some circular orbits around the hydrogen atom. Look at the circular motion of the electron. In the previous episode, we have seen that one of the reasons behind the failure of Rutherford's atomic model is that, according to this model, the accelerating electrons radiates electromagnetic energy and is captured finally by the nucleus. How did Bohr solve this problem? Bohr postulated that an isolated hydrogen atom has its own set of energy levels, where E1 is the energy of the first level, E2 is the energy of the second level, E3 is the energy for the third level, and so on, until E infinity is the energy of the final level. When the atom is in one of these levels, it does not emit radiation even though the electron is accelerating. Each level is associated with a quantum number n, where n could be 1, could be 2, or 3, etc. The first energy level E1 has the smallest energy. It is called the ground state. Its quantum number is 1. When n is greater than 1, the atom has greater energy. We say that the atom is in an excited state. The second energy level E2 is called the first excited state. The third energy level E3 is called the second excited state, etc. Let's move to the ionized state. E infinity is called the ionized state or the reference state. We have discussed the ionized state in details in another video whose title is Deriving Energy Levels of the Hydrogen Atom. You will find the link in the description. According to Bohr, the energy of the atom can be equal to one of these energy levels. It is impossible for the atom to have an energy intermediate between two energy levels. The energy of the atom is quantized. Quantized energy means energy having only certain discrete values. The quantization of energy is discussed in details in another video whose title is Photoelectric Effect 2. You find the link in the description. When the atom makes a transition from a higher energy level EH to a lower energy level EL, the atom must lose energy by emitting a photon. The energy of a photon is given by h nu, which is equal to hc over lambda. For energy to be conserved, the photon's energy must be exactly equal to the energy difference between the higher level and the lower one. A photon can cause the transition of an atom from a lower energy level EL to a higher energy level EH only if its energy is exactly equal to the energy difference between EH and EL. As we have seen in this animation, upon absorption, the photon disappears and the atom makes a transition to the higher energy level. The energy of the photon is given by H times nu, which is equal to H times C over lambda. E photon is exactly equal EH minus EL. Focus, please. This is important. When an atom is excited, it remains in its excited state a few nanoseconds, and then it returns to the ground state. The atom could return to the ground state directly by emitting one photon. Look at this energy level diagram. Let's say that the atom is in the third excited state. Then, 
it could return to the ground state directly by emitting a photon whose energy equals E4 minus E1. But the atom could return to the ground state in several steps by emitting one photon in each transition. For example, the atom could make a downward transition from E4 to E2 by emitting a photon whose energy equals E4 minus E2, and then it returns to the ground state by emitting a photon whose energy equals E2 minus E1. In the end, these postulates of Bohr model can be applied for other atoms. All atoms of the same element have the same set of energy levels. Atoms of different elements have different sets. Now, let's solve an application. Consider the energy levels of a hydrogen atom. Number one, calculate the energy of the emitted photon when the atom makes a downward or an electronic transition from the energy level E2 to the energy level E1. The energy of the emitted photon must be exactly equal to the energy difference between E2 and E1. E2 equals minus 3.4 electron volts and E1 equals minus 13.6 electron volts. Therefore, E photons equals 10.2 electron volts. Let's move to part 2. Calculate the frequency of the emitted photon. The energy of the photon equals h times nu, where h is a Planck's constant and nu is the frequency of the photon. Rearrange, nu equals the energy of the photon over h. Be careful with the units. h is expressed in SI units, whereas the energy of the photon is expressed in electron volts. So we need to express the energy of the photon in joules. One electron volt equals 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Then, let's replace the energy of the photon by 10.2 times 1.6 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Then, the frequency of the photon is 2.46 times 10 to the power 15 hertz. Number 3. The hydrogen atom is in the ground state. The atom is hit by a photon of energy 8 electron volts. Specify whether this photon could be absorbed. If this photon is absorbed, then its energy must be exactly equals EH minus EL. But EL equals E1 since the atom is in the ground state. And EH must be one of the energy levels of the hydrogen atom. So let's determine the value of EH. Replace E photon by 8 electron volts and EL by minus 13.6 electron volts. Therefore, EH equal minus 5.6 electron volts. But minus 5.6 electron volts lies between E1 and E2. Therefore, EH is not one of the energy levels of the hydrogen atom. So, the atom could not absorb this photon. Let's move to number four. Calculate the energy of a photon capable of exciting the atom to the third excited state when it is in the ground state. The energy of the absorbed photon must be exactly equal to the energy difference between E4 and E1. Then, the energy of the photon equals E4 minus E1. Replace E4 by minus 0 0.85 electron volts and E1 by minus 13.6 electron volts. Then the energy of this photon equals 12.75 electron volts. Number 5. The atom is in the third excited state. Indicate all the possible downward transitions of the atom. Third excited state, it means that the energy of the atom is E4. The atom could make a downward transition from E4 to E3 and then from E3 to E2 and from E2 to E1. Or the atom could make a downward transition from E4 to E2 and then 
from E2 to E1 or the atom could make a downward transition directly from E4 to E1. So we have five possible downward transitions.